Alright, so what's going on guys, my name's Chopper, and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting aspect of the Infinite Warfare Zombie storyline, and pretty much what we're going to be discussing is what happens to people's souls, and really where do they go after they die in a World of Wilder production, right? Because in Raven the Redwoods, through the memory charms, you can hear the voices of people who have died and uh, telling their stories about how they died from World of Wilder or from somebody else, and you know, what's kind of their fate is after that. Now we have a lot of very interesting stuff to talk about today, so if you guys do enjoy this video, or if you end up finding this interesting, be sure to leave a like on it. We're going to aim for 115 likes on this video, of course, and I would really appreciate that. So getting started here today, guys, when we think about a Willard Wyler film, we know that a lot of people have been through these, you know, including these celebrities such as David Hasselhoff and Kevin Smith and things like that, but we don't know everybody who's been there, but we can get a good idea through the memory charms of some of the people that have visited or interacted with Willard Wyler and been involved in these productions. As far as we know, not a single person has been able to to escape a Willard Wyler production, but we know some people have been able to kind of survive and I guess make it okay in there. You know, David Hasselhoff is behind his DJ stand, kind of just chilling back, and then we have Kevin Smith who is hiding at the top of a cabin, but everybody else's fate who has been involved in these has died. We know this because of the memory charms that are in Raven the Redwoods. We can hear a lot of testimonies and stories from people who were involved with Willard Wyler's productions in some form or fashion, and they ended up dying somehow, but the thing is, the way these were recorded and the way we hear them and the time zone that they give us, these are like post-mortem recordings like these are after they had died because they tell the entire story but where they are now is what we're going to be discussing today but what I'm going to do is play a couple memory charms for you guys so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about now I did touch on this on a video before kind of like where these people are now after they had died but we didn't really go too in depth that's what I'm going to make this video about so let me go ahead and play a couple of these memory charms for you guys and we'll come back and talk about them in just a second I wanted to make it big but not by lying on my back I'd heard about how creepy Wyler could be from a few other actresses, but when he started getting overly touchy-feely, I knew there was going to be trouble. I had repeatedly tried to brush him off, or keep others on set with me, so I was never alone with him. But that day, he had finally cornered me alone. Things dove into uncomfortable territory. If it weren't for Jeff, the set foreman's interruption, who knows what might have happened. I should have known the invitation to the theater for an early screening of the work in progress was BS. What I received in the theater was a stack of photos of me with Jacob Geiger, my co-star. This creep had me followed and was acting like some demented, upset boyfriend. When I tried to leave, he pushed me down into the chair and told me he had one last thing to show me. I have no idea how it happened. But when I saw the cabin, and I was back in makeup and costume, I thought I'd lost my mind. The film was nothing like the set. It was somehow real. And so was the masked killer that was running around in the loose. I remember the mask, the coldness of it as my hands pressed against it, trying to free myself from the killer's grasp while he plunged his blade into my stomach. I was dead within moments of the first puncture. Please tell me this isn't my final curve. The vortex that lifted us off our feet and into the screen looked like something right out of the words films. Winona was pulled through first, but I wasn't far behind her. As unbelievable as it were, there we stood, in the cabin within his wretched film. We made our escape from the monsters surrounding the cabin and happened upon the small island at the lake center. Mr. Smith on the island to let us into his cabin, but he accused us of being in on this entire fiasco with Willard. Coincidentally, on the way back to the shore, we overheard his screams. But whoever had killed him had now turned its attention to us. The splasher attacked Winona first. I tried to defend her, but... I was immediately incapacitated. 
while I lay helplessly bleeding, nearly unconscious. The final sounds I'll never hear were over known as screams. I'm so sorry. I love you. Caught by the slasher's blade. The movies we made together, <laughs> we saw the best, I tell you. I'd given that son of a bitch almost 40 years of my blood and sweat. But you know what? This goes to show you, see, you can't trust nobody in show business anymore. Me and the crew, we was working in good faith without pay for a month. And most of these kids got families, if you know what I mean. When I tried to talk to him on set, the horny old bastard's got one of these young actresses pinned up. He sees me and gets all worked up and says, we should talk it over at his theater after the shift since he's, you know, busy. So I headed straight over that night to get to the bottom of this little monetary problem we're having. Willard's running at the mouth, telling me to forget what I saw with the girl that morning and all this talk about making deals with some guy. He tells me to just wait till this other deal gets all settled. All I knew was we made a deal, and it was only right that he kept his side of the damn thing. Well, that rat bastard pulled some voodoo shit on me. Next thing I know, I got some damn psychopathic mascot chopping me and my crewman Danny Wapner into pieces in the middle of the forest. I was just giving him a lift home that night, and the theater was on the way. Go figure. If you're paying attention to those radials, you'll see that every single one was recorded post-mortem. This is after they've died by the slasher, and they can tell that through every single one that their death was because of that. You know, they were avoiding the zombies for a little while, but nobody was ever a match for the slasher. And you can even hear in the second radio that they tried to contact Kevin Smith, or they tried to get him to, to let him stay in the cabin, but they were denied, and they had to go somewhere else, and that's when they were killed by the slasher. There was also a lot of mention of them being transported into the films, and a vortex coming out of the screen and sucking them into the actual cabin itself and like being in the film as it is a reality and we can see this in the Raven the Redwoods cutscene where Willard Wilder performs a blood ritual and then that enables him to suck the character's souls into that screen and put them in the set itself. Now it is interesting to note that it looks like he needs like a photocopy or a picture of every single person that he's going to put into the film and that's what we heard in the first radio is that they had a stack of pictures right there which is most likely what he used but uh, at the end of the day when he uses that blood sacrifice he's able to control their soul and once they're in the film they're pretty much under his rule. But the question is how are these people still able to communicate with us if their bodies have been completely completely and utterly destroyed in this film but their souls are probably still floating around somewhere we can hear in one of the radios that somebody like as soon as he died he was able to see his lifeless body fall from above like his soul automatically came out very shortly after his moment of death but where did his soul go after that is he just floating around now is he in the soul key this is something we can only speculate about right now my best guess is that all the souls of people who have died in these films end up going into that soul box that you see inside the pack-a-punch room and uh, they're all floating around in there but they're still alive like they can still communicate through their souls but their bodies are completely gone so what happens if we open up this soul box at the end of infinite warfare zombie and that's where my theory about the cypher that we had the other day comes into play now i made a video about that you guys can go check it out if you want to if you're interested in that cypher but it basically talks about the soul key guiding their damn souls to eternal salvation now it said there like there's going to be multiple people and everybody thought these are going to be like you know obviously of course our four characters that we're playing as but I'm thinking a little bit bigger scale than that I believe that this is gonna guide the souls of all the people who have died every single one who have died in a Willard Wyler production not necessarily just in Raven the Redwoods or not necessarily just Spaceland but every single other production that he's been involved in and the people who have died uh, thereof so at the end of DLC 4, when we have the fully crafted soul key and we open up that box that is in the Pack-a-Punch room, what is going to happen? That is hard to say because we don't have enough information. We're only at DLC 1 right now and hopefully we get some more storyline and some background onto this. But the Eternal Salvation part is the thing that I'm not completely sure of. And we don't know exactly where these souls could even go. If these bodies are destroyed, it's not like they can really go back to normal. At least I wouldn't imagine anyway. But that is pretty much my theory. We're going to release them and they're going to go somewhere and their souls are going to be free and free from the reins of Willard Wilder. So anyway guys that is gonna be it for today that's what i've got for you guys let me know your theories about this in the comment section down below what do you think the eternal salvation part means it's pretty clear that we're going to be releasing the souls at the very end of infinite for zombies but where the souls are going to go and how things are going to play out is uh, it's hard to say right now and we're not really too sure but let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section guys 
I really do appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this video and uh, kind of give me their input on it. But that is going to be the video for today, guys. Thank you, everybody, again so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe if you are not already. Also, guys, make sure to follow me on Twitter. Links down below in the description. And uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.